Oh man, I think we're live. Did Tesla just drop the largest bombshell on the planet yesterday? I think they did. Hey, congratulations. Welcome. Good morning, folks. Uh, wherever you are out there, welcome to the Charge Life Podcast. I am Joseph Barletta, and this is where we discuss EVs and all things EV charging. So glad you could pull over and park with us today. Well, let's get plugged in. Uh, before we get into today's episode, it's brought to you by Smart Charge America. Smart Charge America since 2007 has installed tens of thousands of EV charging stations nationwide, and they can do the same for you today, whether in the home, commercial, service, let their team of expert installation specialists guide you to the very best charging solution for your electric car needs. After all, if you can't charge, you can't drive. Go ahead and visit smartchargeamerica.com today to get started. All right, so Tesla's Cybertruck charging and power sharing, like how much do we know and what, what's important? Okay, so from the from the first kind of onset, the cat's out of the bag. Yes, um, we were kind of in talks with Tesla with regards to bi-directional charging uh, capabilities on the Cybertruck, what's all needed, so forth and so on. And what was really interesting was this kind of unique thing with regard to the neutral. You know, that that's kind of like the, the missing component in the whole thing. But we knew that the... Uh, the Cybertruck had the uh, onboard inverter to be able to do the uh, bi-directional pull. Uh, we knew that the universal Gen 3 wall connector had the ability uh, with transistors uh, inside to be able to do bi-directional charging capabilities. Now, that's the only one of that. The universal charger is the only one of the, uh, so not the regular Tesla Nex Gen 3 wall connector. It's the universal Gen 3 wall connector that can actually do the the bi-directional capability. Now, you know, you know m most people are referring to this power sharing ability for the this Tesla Cybertruck as uh, vehicle to grid. No, I don't think it's vehicle to grid just yet. I think it's more vehicle to home, really. That's what we're seeing, uh, vehicle to home. So let's just, let's just kind of focus on all things kind of vehicle to home for now. And then we'll figure, we'll focus on like, what are the charging capabilities of the truck itself? Uh, some of the supercharging, you know, capabilities, as well as the output capabilities on the, um, you know, the utility uh, cabinet in the back that has the NEMA 1450, uh, you know, plug inside there. So that being said, if you visit the website, you'll see there's really a lot of talk with regards to, you know, what, what the, I guess, the components of the charging system for all things Cybertruck have in inside of it. And it's, it's truly remarkable. We, we, you actually see the stuff and you're like, oh, this is this is game changer. And I told you guys, I told you from the start, it was going to have a NEMA 1450 in, uh, plug inside the bed. I knew it. And then two days later, we saw that little, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, leak of the photo. And I knew it. It's, it's because if if that's all people were able to do, like Ford and GM would come out with a 30 amp, 240 volt plug, like you better believe Tesla's going to kick it up a notch. And in order for real-time welders, workers, most of that heavy-duty machinery does use the NEMA 1450 plug, uh, you know, to power those devices. And so, you know, the 1430L plug or whatever the, the plug that was actually in the, the, the Ford F-150 Lightning Series, it does exactly what you need to. But when you kick it up a notch, when you go to that next, you know, construction level, you're going to need that power uh, and that power capabilities. You're going to see this truck on a lot more of those hardcore job sites in addition to the smaller ones. So that was, you know, pretty unique in our findings. Now, of course, you want to look at charging specs. You look at the charging uh, AC charging on the Cybertruck, no different than any other car out there. You have the uh, 48 amp continuous draw, which is going to pull somewhere, you know, around the, 11.5 kilowatts you know so what we don't really have for now is the range per hour estimates on what that is uh, what that's going to compose of uh, like for instance with a model model y at 48 amps that's generally pulling around 44 miles of range per hour however this is a much heavier truck it's almost got twice the battery size uh, capabilities of a model y and so that being said i'm thinking that because of that, it's probably just going to cut it in half. And so we'll probably be looking at somewhere around 25 miles of range per hour. Um, no, no definite answer on that. We're still going to get the, the, the chart out. We're going to get our information from Tesla. But that's kind of where you can see. So if you drive 100 miles a day, you plug in, boom, you're charged in, in four hours. That's kind of where we're estimating uh, all things inclusive. They did say with the 48-volt battery 
system and the 800 volt wiring and, and, and battery, I guess, architecture around the platform, it does allow for 250 kW max on supercharging. And so this is important when, when you, so all the other Teslas were operating at 400 volt architecture and they were maxing at 250. And so if you guys talk about, if you've been on this channel, you've seen me talk about the, the, the charging curve on how it spikes, it goes up 250, kind of goes and then starts kind of tapering down, tapering down, tapering down until it gets to that 80%. And then it really just takes a long time to finish that, that last 80, you know, that last 20%. So with the 800 volt architecture, you're going to be able to keep that 250 kW charge a lot longer, which is going to be able to accelerate and almost keep in line with getting to that 80%, roughly, if not in 10 minutes, maybe in, in 15 to 20 minutes. So slightly longer, but you are looking at double the size of the battery pack. So really impressed to see that. We do anticipate because it's 250 plus max on the on the charging specs. For that, we we do anticipate that Tesla is gonna, you know, possibly update that sometime. Uh, we we don't know we don't know when, but we, we're hoping that they they update it somehow sometime. So those are the the I guess the the max charging features on both AC and both DC or or the supercharging. Now the outlets per se the outlets there there there's four outlets one twenty volt outlets two in the cabin. Okay, and two in the cargo cargo bed. We know that. So, we also have a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet in the cargo bed, which is you know that's a 50 amp outlet that's going to produce 40 amps of continuous draw. So you're looking at 9.6 kW of of continuous real power that's able to be delivered out of the bed of the Cybertruck. That is phenomenal. We uh, that's huge. Uh, <laughs> we're super stoked on that end. So as far as the home bucket backup system. When you're plugging the Cybertruck into, uh, you know, using the universal charger, you're plugging that in. There is some additional hardware that will be needed for that power share feature to, you know, kind of engage with your existing power wall setup and your existing gateway setup. So it's very important to know that when you're dealing with, I guess, the, the truck itself doesn't have a neutral and the wall connector doesn't have a neutral, but your panel does have a neutral. And so in order to have that bi-directional flow complete the loop, the grounding loop, you're going to have to have something that's basically connected in between where your panel is and the charger. We're going to have to install another device in addition to, you know, making sure we reconfigure and, and do everything for your gateway to make sure that it understands, hey, we, we do have that bi-directional flow there. And so that's why if you look at the the actual home backup series uh, or system, it specifically states that you need that Gen 3 universal wall connector for that. And you also need the Tesla gateway. And, and the reason why that gateway or backup switch, uh, you know, being optional is re required is because of that, that, that disconnect. It, it has to know, okay, hey, um, the, the grid's out. We're only dealing with uh, kind of behind the meter, uh, I guess, in this case, uh, and not in, in front of the meter, which is where the utility, you know, all that stuff goes. And so it's going to drive our, uh, our, our bi-directional charging capabilities to a point where we're just going to need to add one device. And we don't, we know the name of the hardware, but we're, we're still kind of in pilot projects with, with Tesla right now on some of that stuff. But once we get a couple more installs under our belt, we'll be able to kind of know a little bit more in detail of exactly how this stuff uh, works. But we do know that you, you do need an existing gateway power wall system set up and you do need the universal Gen 3 wall connector installed in order for you to be able to participate in that bi-directional flow. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. You know, I mean, you know, I, if you look at our system, you know, we're dealing with like six power walls. And so based on, let's say, a, a, a two kilowatt hour power draw you're looking at if things shut down we can probably be good to go in the office for about 40 hours and that's it and then we're we're, we're drained out of power and, and we, we we have to you know go operate from our home so forth and so on so if you look at the if we had a cyber truck pulling in at almost double let's say 150 kw is the size of the battery pack you know, that's going to buy us another three days, 
you know, if that. So that that stretches your 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 backup time from two days to five days. And then honestly, if you if you're if you're out of power after five days, you got bigger problems to worry about. And you may be, you may need to look at uh, you know possibly finding somewhere uh, somewhere else like a bug out plan or something. I, I, I don't know. Or, or of course, if you have solar, you're you're kind of in the money right there. You're you're good to go. So, you know, the the charging specs, forty eight amps on AC, DC. We're limited to two hundred and fifty kW. I do anticipate that DC moving upward to you know kind of in, in the realm of the. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of scour through the website right now, but we do anticipate that DC stuff uh, basically moving upwards uh, from two fifty to somewhere, yeah, somewhere around 350 uh, because of the architecture. Once the version four superchargers start coming online. Now, what you're seeing that, that's coming online right now all across America are the version four stalls, but they're still using version three supercharging cabinets behind the fence. We have not seen any evidence of actual version four cabinets going in of course that's just kind of a swap out of old cabinets to new cabinets and so what we're hoping is that we have these superchargers that are kind of in the pipeline and a lot of these superchargers are going to are going to start uh, basically kind of finding their way to where it's going to start meeting up with that you know that version four supercharger requirements which is you know higher transformer from the utility uh you know higher uh, power cabinets uh, higher feeds uh, going into these cabinets, going into each one of the, the, the pedestals to be able to, to deliver that 350 kW. But as of right now, we know that it's the stalls themselves that are that version four, but those stalls are only operating uh, as as much as the actual cabinets behind the fence are able uh, are actually allowed to do, which is the you know 250 kW max. And so, really kind of unique stuff. The supercharging. Uh, on the power wall, we were expecting to see 350, but I, I get it. I, I, I know why they have 250 uh, on the website. It's because of, of that in general. I mean, that, that's it. That, that's the only <clears throat> that's the only reasonable explanation on that. End. And so, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, we I, I, I'm looking. I don't know if I'll necessarily get the, the, the beast mode. I get it. it it's it's amazing. But I'm more into I'm, I'm more into the, the range. I love the fact that it's a very quiet ride from a lot of the comments that we received yesterday at the party. And so, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is some good stuff. I mean, you see that Ford has had a lot of problems with their their Ford um, Pro, you know, home integration system, and it's mainly due to different systems talking with different hardwares. And then, of course, you have this vehicle that has uh, different communication lens that it's seeking its 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 messaging through with regards to receiving its over the air updates via Wi Fi and then sending out the signal via Bluetooth and then you know Ford is you know trying to I guess talk to the Ford Home Charge Pro integration system that's not owned and fully you know integrated by Ford it's it's a third a third party vendor and then the software is another third party vendor. So you can see how the Ford integration system, it's just when, 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 and we still know people that, that have those systems in their houses with the F-150 lightnings and they're not, they're not working. And it's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty daunting. You know, you pay for this giant system and it's not working. It's because you have this fragmented model where you have software, the cellular, the communication and the hardware all done by five different parties. And it's just, you know, Ford slaps a sticker on it and says, Hey, let's do it. But the, the one time that something goes wrong, you have various parties that are all trying to point the finger saying, oh, no, it's this, it's this, this. They're not all vertically integrated. They're not all on the same page. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow. We know that. But, you know, in the end, I guess this, this solution, knowing that it's tangible, we can do it right now. It's a really good offering. So we're only going to be able to deploy these as fast as, as, as Tesla can get these Cybertruck and crank these Cybertrucks out. So we're super excited. Uh, on the all-wheel drive, you know, there's three different versions of the, the Cybertruck. You know, you have the rear-wheel drive, you have the all-wheel drive, and then you have the Cyber Beast. And so, you know, with with that, if you look at the deliveries, like right now, we know that the everything that's being pumped out right now is going to be the all-wheel drive version, the, the, the you know, 79.9999 version. Eventually, later on, uh, there, I think what they said in 2024, uh, maybe later on in 2024, the cyber beast uh, will come. So I guess 
you know, if you look at Tesla's rollout plan, they're pro- probably going to do this just like they, they rolled out like the Tesla Roadster or the Model S. They're going to go with the more expensive version first, and then they'll roll out the all-wheel drive version. And then they'll roll out the uh, the cheaper, you know, in 2025, the cheaper rear wheel drive version. Once a lot more of these cars are on the road and they've kind of worked out the kinks and, you know, kind of have things really scaled up with regards to the production line, really kicking it in gear. Then we're able to really start seeing that, uh, that, that truck. Now, you know, look, the rear wheel drive coming in at $49,000, that's after the tax credit. It's a, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, the average, literally the average, the average price for a car right now in America is $48,000. It's the average selling price for a car. So if you're $1,000 over the average selling price for, and it's a Cybertruck. Are you kidding me? What is going on? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. But those are some of the charging specs on the actual Cybertruck itself. Some really, really good stuff that we were, you know, we had, we had, we were blessed to, to be at the event. We were blessed to meet so many uh, of our wonderful, you know, customers that were there. Um, a lot of our, our YouTube influencers were there. We, we, uh, we love our YouTube guys. You know, they, they do a lot to really push the movement and the advent of, of the electric vehicles and sustainable transportation out there. So anytime anyone's advocating for that, man, we're, we're all in, uh, you know, in, in, in their boat. So, you know, as far as the, the lessons learned, I guess it's just a phenomenal truck. I mean, if you look at the industry experts and teardown Titans, Sandy Monroe, shout out to him, man. He was, he was really, man, he had a rant on the Cybertruck that really, if you're a, if you're a legacy automaker and you're listening to this, you, you got your work cut out for you. If you were, if you're banking on your, your top sales segment being pickup trucks, because you know, what he's saying about what the Cybertruck has the ability to do, it's a, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty scary it's daunting so it's definitely exciting times for us you know i don't think anything changes for us you know we're still gonna you know the 48 amp on uh onboard charger um is just right in line with what we've already been installing for model 3 and model y customers model x and s as well so nothing's going to change there but we do anticipate there's a a good chance that when we're installing the cyber truck for you know you know charging stations for the cyber truck that homeowner will most likely go with the universal wall connector and we will drive the homeowner to go with that particular option based on the fact that if they do want to have the home integration system, it shouldn't be too much for us to be able to acquire the, um, the three B the three B box and, and come out there and, and do it. Um, but I would imagine those would be only for those homeowners that have existing power wall, uh, you know, setups inside their house for that gateway to be able to do that communication. So, you know, I guess we haven't really thought about like if we do sell them a regular wall connector. I guess in let's say later on down the road they get the 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 power walls with the gateway. You know how much it would be for us to come in and swap that out because yeah, it's it's the wiring still there, but it is a different base and it's a different uh, you know charging station altogether. So that's gonna be uh, that's that's gonna be have this it's gonna be have like a deciding factor for our customers. I mean, that's one of the things we really want to kind of walk them through and make sure they're they're making the best educated guess, you know, for that decision. But you know, that's it. You know, I I, uh, I don't have any other uh, any, anything else. This happened so quick. Audience questions we haven't been able to get uh, together uh, enough of them, but I'm sure you can you can go online and you can see uh, a bunch of uh, questions being answered. But thank you so much for our listeners and subscribers. Uh, for your time today. Look, I hope this episode has brought a little more value to your day. Uh, I know we're all better for it. I'm better for it. I love you. And yes, uh, we can't do this without you. So yes, please. Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, go ahead and click the thumbs up icon uh, you know, below. Share, comment, subscribe to, uh, to our channel if you think we earned it. Um, and that's it. You know, Look, thanks again for charging up with us today. Keep in mind, you can always find us at smartchargeamerica.com. And remember, folks, if you can't charge, you can't drive. We'll see you next time. Cheers.